Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, Archetype Builds here, and with a bit of a different video for you here. Um, they've just released the Playtest 6 uh, huge, huge document, 77 pages of PDF, and that's too big for my usual type of deep dive videos. Uh, you know, not deep dive, but usually I, I like to put you know, little things up on the screen and zoom in on specific segments, and I like to mull over these new changes a little bit before I bring them out. Not, you know, years of playtesting, obviously, but uh, usually I like to sit with it and think about it and then come back to you with a video. And with this much content, if I did that, um, it would be, you know, it'd come out in, in August. So I want to just go through, you know, kind of get my reactions. I've skimmed this document very lightly just to see if there was something worth talking about here. Um, and there definitely is. So trying a new type of video, uh, maybe this works, maybe it doesn't, but I can promise you that I'm going to be going through each of these classes and doing a much deeper dive soon. Um, and I'm going to have some guests on the channel, we're going to be talking about these changes, it's going to be a very different kind of experience, uh, really digging into 1D&D. &D. Alright, so let's talk about the rogue. Uh, rogue sneak attack is no longer required to be used on your turn with the attack action. Okay, so that's that that's that restriction that was preventing opportunity attacks from getting sneak attack. That seems to be gone. They've got weapon mastery, and that's not instead of anything. Notice, so this is good. The rogue is getting boosts. Rogue needed boosts. Some classes now. Blah blah blah. blah. Steady aim is a new third level feature. I did like steady aim. I think this is yeah, yeah. I think this is good. Cunning Strikes. Now, this is the thing that Jeremy said in the interview, and I was like, what the heck? Cunning Strikes, new 5th level feature, and uh, I'm very interested in this. Before we get there, I do want to remind us about the sneak attack progression. So it's 1d6 for the first two levels, 2d6 for the next two, 3d6 for the next two. So every two levels, you're going up a d6, uh, and that continues consistently until you're at 10d6 at 20th level. Um, now, a d6 on average is 3.5 damage, so if we just look at the uh, or the evens, so that's 7 extra damage at 3rd and 4th level, uh, 14 extra damage at 7th and 8th level, right, you can think about it that way. Um, okay, so we've got that in mind. Ooh, but there's more, there's more design notes. Expertise is returned to 6th level, evasion returned to 7th level. Okay, so this is all the moving stuff around. Subtle Strikes has been removed because of the addition of Steady Aim. That makes sense. Devious Strikes is a new 14th level feature. Stroke of Luck of Return to 11th level. Okay. Bing, bada, bing, bing, bing. Bing, bada, bing, bing, bing. So, Sneak Attack. If you're attacking with a finesse or ranged weapon, and if it meets one of the following requirements, you have advantage on the attack roll. That's one. That's probably the easiest one to get. If you have an ally adjacent to the target, the ally doesn't have the incapacitated condition, and you don't have disadvantage on the attack roll. All right. Two possibilities. Uh, either one will work. To determine the extra damage, and you roll the number of d6s, Thieves can't weapon mastery. You're going to get two kinds of weapon choice. Okay. Now, am I wrong? God, I should have played this five up, but I don't. Um, fighter got three. Did Barbarian get three? I'm going to assume Barbarian got two, because Fighter is kind of like the weapon mastery guy. And everyone else, it looks like, gets two weapon masteries. Okay. Cunning action that we all love. Steady aim. As a bonus action, you can give yourself advantage in your next attack roll. You can only use this feature if you haven't moved, and after you use it, your speed becomes zero. So if you stay in place, you get advantage, which we all know means that your sneak attack is active. So this is like a new way of giving yourself that sneak attack at third level. You could just not move. And for a for a ranged rogue, like I had a campaign where I was doing a like the crossbow expert sharpshooter uh, kind of package, and not moving was like 
I, I like I was always able to not move because I was always hiding, right? And I pop out and I fire my crossbow. Uh, but this is a bonus action, right? So then you can't hide afterwards. Yeah. Anyway, it's 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 very useful for the rogue package. Here we are, cutting strike. Okay. So it, just before we get into it, I think rogues are actually pretty bad. Um, I love the way that they can do. They do great at skills. They're very good at the skill stuff. I think in combat, rogues are just not very good. And the reason why is because sometimes you miss, right? So, you know, you know sometimes you miss and you don't get your one attack and you don't have multi-attack. And if you don't get that one attack, then you don't get your sneak attack damage. You don't, you know, nothing works, right? So sometimes you miss and then you just suck. Um, and... I don't think the sneak attack, you know, the sneak attack damage scales pretty well, but it is, it's not fungible, right? So you, you can't, you, you know, if you're attacking, if there's two guards in front of a king or something like that, and uh, the king's got half cover behind his guards, and you attack a guard, right? If you overkill that guy by 20 damage, you can't move that. So having a big old you know, powerful sneak attack is not always what you want. Sometimes you want to, like, spread that damage out, and rogues don't have that flexibility. Um, rogue is also not, you know, obviously you've got no spell casting. You've got no uh, no utility in that regard. You can have a ranged or a melee rogue, and there, there's different options for those guys. So I think that the, the rogue, as it is presented in the 2014 Player's Handbook, and it largely didn't change except for a nerf uh, in the the playtest. I, I think it's weak. I think it's weak in combat. I think it doesn't do actually that well. Um, so already we haven't even we haven't even gotten into this, but weapon mastery is going to give you access to gosh, what is it? Vex, which gives you advantage on another hit, right? Um, which is very useful for rogues. Uh, the Nick property is going to let you make multiple attacks, which is very useful for rogues. The so the weapon mastery is, is so big for rogue uh, because they just they needed something to latch on to, and that is something. Steady aim is potentially very very useful for rogues, uh, and a, you know that's not a that's not limited to to ranged attacks, right? So if you're standing in melee and you don't want to take opportunity attacks anyway, you can stand there, give yourself advantage you've got your sneak attack. Okay, so much better for that consistent striking the enemy and dealing that sneak attack damage. So this is already much better. Cunning Strikes was advertised as being a strategic use of the rogue, which is what I'm most excited about because rogue just did not have... I mean, they had cunning action, but you're using that to run away. You're using that to hide. You are not actively improving the odds that your party wins the battle and i think this is gonna hopefully this is gonna do that you've developed cunning ways to use your sneak attack when you deal sneak attack damage you can add one of the following cunning strike effects each effect has a die cost which is a number of sneak attack damage you must forgo to add to the effect all right so trade-off remember when i said like that that doing that huge burst of damage is not always what you need right you remove the die before rolling and the effect occurs immediately after the attack's damage is dealt. Okay, got it. So it's like a like the old smite kind of thing. If you had the poison effect, blah, blah, blah. If a cunning strike requires a saving throw... Ooh, interesting. Um, dexterity modifier for your saving throw. Good, good. Disarm! Oh, shit! It's a battle master! Oh, shit! The target must is going to dexterity saving throw or drops one item of your choice that's holding and it's only 1d6 cost... Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, poison cost 1d6. You add toxin to your strike, forcing the target to make a constitution saving throw. On a failed save, the target has the poison condition for one minute. Now, it's a con save, but you're only foregoing 1d6 damage. You're foregoing 3 damage for the poison condition. That's amazing. At the end of each of its turns, it can repeat this save. All right, so that's not that great. Um, 
and you have to have a poisoner's kit on your person. Wow. Way to, like, I was so excited at the start of that sentence. <laughs> at the start of this paragraph. I was so excited. Right here, right at this point, I was like, this is an amazing feature. And then <laughs> it just gets worse and worse. Uh, okay. Fair enough. Uh, trip is going to come. So why even bother with the, with the, they've each got a certain number of dice, blah, 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 blah. They've all got 1d6. It's all 1d6 is the cost. What are you talking about? Um, trip costs 1d6. If the target is large or smaller, it must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or have a prone condition. That's good, right? Withdraw. Huh. So again, it only it's only going to cost you one die. So, you know, let's say you're a a 10th level rogue. You're doing 5d6 on your sneak attack. So, all this is saying is do 4d6 instead, right? Reduce your your damage by like not even 20% cuz you've got your base damage. So, it's like reduce your damage by 10% and you can uh you can disengage for free and move half your speed. So then you can, I guess, use your uh, bonus action for cutting action, like hide or something or dodge, right? God, that's good. God, this is good. Okay, rogues are good now. And don't think I've missed... This is on 5th level when everyone else is getting extra attack, right? So this was the ro when the rogue started to fall off. And now... And also, like, the percentage decrease in damage is going to keep going down because you're getting extra damage dice on your sneak attack. And they fix the thing. So you can do this on an opportunity attack, too, right? God, the rogue is so good now. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. The rogue is good. Uh, uncanny dodge, expertise, evasion, reliable talent. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, you can use up to two cunning strike effects when you deal sneak attack damage, paying the die cost for each. Okay. So if you're, if you're trying to poison them, like, every turn... Where are you? Yep. If you're trying to, like, poison them every turn, now you can also, like, trip them or also withdraw. You can you can disarm and and withdraw or whatever you you want to do. That's at eleventh level. Eleventh level is big. I'm putting it on the books. Eleventh level is big now. D one D and D. Devious strikes. Ooh, you have practiced new ways to use your sneak attack deviously. That's a that's a very funny sentence. The following effects are now amongst your cunning options, and they're two d six costs. Whoa, knockout is sixty six. What? Okay, days uh days condition that makes sense. Uh, constitution saving throw, which isn't that great. Um, but the days condition is really devastating. I I still like. I guess I'd take Dazed over Poisoned, but would I take it twice as much over Poisoned? Because it's going to cost twice as much. Um, knock out 66. So that's most of your damage right there. The target must succeed on a constitution saving throw, or it has the unconscious condition for one minute? Or until it takes any damage. And it's repeating the save at the end of each of its turn. God dang it, wizards. Okay. I was excited about this, and now, and now I'm thinking about it. So, compare to Stunning Strike, I, obviously, right? That's what you got to do. It's on a hit. Um, the monk expends a key point. They can only do it once per turn, but that's effectively true for us as well, because we only get the one attack. We're, we are exchanging, right, what would 60-60 in long run average? So that's going to be 21 
expected damage. We reduce our damage by 21, and in exchange, they're unconscious, which is, I mean, unconscious is quite a condition, right? They, they are not doing anything. If, if they end up hit by, like, an area of effect spell, if, if the, you know, someone else goes next and does a thunder wave and hits them, then they wake up. On their turn... At the end of their turn, they're going to make a save. Again, it is a con save, which is always a bad one to target. They're going to make a save and maybe be up. So you've cost them one turn. Um, maybe they fail that save, and then you've cost them two turns. Maybe their ally comes by and slaps them because they recognize the unconscious condition. It's just, it's such... Oh... The option alone is great, you know? The option alone is is so cool to have this, and it feels very roguelike, and I love it so much. The cost is so high, and the reward is, like, potentially so high and potentially so low, and I... Yeah. But, the, I mean, having this in here, like, just, just throwing this in the game onto, onto Rogue... Uh, let's pretend like the 66 is valuable, right? Let's like wave it up in the air and let's say like they're going to play test it. They're going to see what the effect on the, on the combat is and they're going to adjust that, you know, is knockout a good thing? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's a good thing. This is so cool. This is really, really great. Um, I don't know if 66 is the right number of dice for that ability, but kudos for having this in the game. That's sick. Obscures 3d6, you strike the target's eyes. Oh, that is devious. Um, target must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or has the blinded condition until the end of its next turn. Really, it's regrowing its eyes like that? Okay. Um, yeah, I, that makes sense. Um, 3d6 is kind of surprisingly high cost. Uh, I, I feel like the poison condition is as. Right? Doesn't the, does the poison condition not give you disadvantage on all your attack rolls? And is that not what blinded does? I just, I kind of feel like this should be one d six and move it up. Up into here. And then this is a hot take. I know. I because disarm is not always relevant, right? Disarm is not always important, but when it is important, it's really important. Make it two d six and move it up to the the fourteenth level. I don't know. I kind of feel like blinding someone is, is one of the, the more basic things that you could do. But okay. Um, I love that. We're going to proceed. Slippery Mind, uh, Elusive, Stroke of Luck. You have an uncanny knack for succeeding. Yep. Yep. Very cool. Okay. Um, I'm in love. I'm in love with the new Rogue. This is an amazing, amazing improvement on the class. This is exactly the kind of redesign I think that Rogue needed... And that I think Monk needed too, <laughs> but but this is like like great. This is great. This is a genuinely cool new set of mechanics and abilities. Rogue is going to be thriving. I also like, you know, it's it's obvious, but I'm just gonna say it: the fact that you get to choose, you get to choose. You have options every time you hit. Every time you hit your opponent, you have an option. That's so nice. That's so nice. Now, like, the community the entire time was, like, fighter. all fighters should have battle master maneuvers, right? Like, that was a very common thing people said. And they came out with weapon masteries. And I was like, okay, as long as the weapon masteries are something where you've got some options and you can choose each time you hit, right? And, you know, you can only have one weapon mastery property on a weapon unless you're a higher level fighter. Um, so, and a lot of those weapon masteries were just passive. We're just like Vex, where like you get advantage on the next hit and it's there's nothing to do. And I was so disappointed by that. I was so disappointed by weapon masteries. And I still am. I still think uh, mechanically it's better, but it is it does nothing 
to make marshals more interesting to play or very little to make marshals more interesting to play high level fighters get to like put two mastery properties on a weapon and they choose which one they do when they when they go to attack and that i was like that is the future that like that's what we need for everyone and i was so sad they didn't do it for everyone else and look at rogue look at these little guys they've got four options at level five going to seven options at level 14 every time they hit they get to choose what they're what they do that's so cool that's so nice and they do get weapon masteries on top of that, right? Um, you know, the boring kind, but still. God. Thank you, wizards. Thank you. This is the rogue that we needed all along. Um, okay, subclasses. Uh, and I only have... Uh, I only have 23 minutes, so... I don't think it was going to take 23 minutes, but just, you know. Arcane spell list rather than wizard spell list. There is no school of magic restriction after third level. Sorry. Third level is the, uh, is that the spell level or the rogue level? Okay. Versatile trickster has been redesigned. Cutting strike with mage hand. Dude. Okay. Uh, Spellcasting, you're going to get three cantrips. Mage Hand is... And two others. That's funny. Uh, it's not, you know, the Mage Hand cantrip and two other cantrips. It's, you know, three cantrips, and then they, they tell you that one of them is Mage Hand. Uh, in Rogue level, Mage Hand is going to stay. I got it, got it. Spells, spells. Oh, are they um are they half casters now? Or are they third casters again? Yeah, I mean they're not getting second level spells till seventh level, so they are one third casters. It's kinda weird. I kinda thought one third casters might might go, right? Might just not be in the game anymore. Uh, because it's a clunky and strange way to play. Mage Hand Ledger... Legitimane. Legitimane. When you cast Mage Hand, you can make the Spectral Hand visible. Blah, blah, blah. Control as a bonus action instead of an action. Thieves, tools, and dexterity checks. And then, boom. From 3rd level to ninth level. Magical Ambush. If you have the Invisible Condition, when you cast a spell on the creature, this disadvantage on saving throw makes against the spell. Okay. So if we are invisible... They have disadvantage on saving throws. That's cool. 13th level versatile trickster. When you use the disarm or trip options of your cunning strike. You can also target that option at a creature within 5 feet of the spectral hand. Alright, let's break that down because that's complicated. So, uh, ignore the first sentence. When you use the disarm or trip options of your cunning strike so two options from your cunning strike you have to be using them already which means you've hit someone so when you hit someone and expend those dice and select the disarm or trip option you can redirect that effect to uh something next to your mage hand rather than the person that you're attacking so effectively because you can use your bonus action to move the hand to where you need it to go so effectively this just allows you to spread that effect out to whoever you want it to within 30 feet um that's good it's just the disarmor trip which makes sense right okay that's, that's fine. I mean, you, you're also getting spells, right? So it's, I'm not expecting this to be a very powerful subclass. Spell Thief. Oh, this is the cool one, right? Use your reaction to force a creature to make a saving throw. On a failed save, you negate the spell's effect against you, and you steal the knowledge of the spell. If you can. 
yeah, love that. That's super cool. Super thematic. And we're on to the assassin. Assassinate now gives you advantage on initiative rolls. Love that. And the extra damage of the feature no longer requires target to be surprised. What? Really? Infiltration expertise. Uh, I guess we'll have to read it to know what that is. Inventum weapons, 13th level feature. Allowing you to benefit from your poisoner's kit. Could you not already benefit from your poisoner's kit by poisoning things? Hmm. Death strike. No longer requires the target to be surprised. Ah, interesting. All right, assassinate. You have an advantage on initiative rolls. Already very powerful feature. Surprising strike. <laughs> Surprising strikes. Um, during the first round of each combat, you have advantage on attack rolls against any creature that hasn't taken a turn. Okay. So if you win initiative, you you have advantage on the other people. If you don't win initiative, you're sort of trying to focus on the ones that haven't realized what's going on yet. If your sneak attack hits any target during that round, the target takes extra damage of the weapon's type equal to your rogue level. Nice. So it's only in that first round of combat, but you get it, you're getting that barbarian brutal critical effect, right? And you're getting it way earlier. You're getting it here at third level. So, like, you know, it's only three extra damage uh, on your sneak attack. But as you go up, it's going to be five, eight, ten, you know. That's nice. I guess it is only to one person and, one, like, one strike, right? It's not going to be... It, it's a maximum of once per combat. So I guess that's just fine. Infiltration expertise. If you're you're an expert at opposing someone else while in disguise, created by using your disguise kit, you have advantage on charisma. Now, did we get... Yeah, we got the bonus proficiencies back here. While this guy's created your disguise kit, you have advantage on the charisma deception checks you make while pretending to be someone else. Sure. Yeah, great infiltrator. Good. Utter, unerringly mimic another person's speech. Goodbye, actor feet. Right? Goodbye, actor. Handwriting or both if you've spent some time studying each one. Okay. 13th level, Venom weapons. When you use the poison option of your cunning strike, the target also takes 2d6 poison damage whenever it fails the saving throw. Interesting. This damage ignores resistance to poison damage. So I like this. I love this, like, when you fail the saving throw, you get worse. That is very fun. Two, two thoughts uh, in terms of criticism here. 2d6 at 13th level doesn't feel super high. And again, they're making the saving throw once per turn, right? So 2d6 per turn isn't exactly substantial. We also know that, like, Constitution is not a great saving throw to target. Most things that you fight will have a positive Constitution modifier. So, I'm thinking that for 13th level, this is actually pretty weak. What, did, what was Arcane Guy getting? This is the Versatile Trickster one, right? I, I kind of feel like Versatile Trickster is better, and you're, you've still got your spellcasting, right, with Arcane Trickster. So, you know, not a lot of spellcasting, but you get some. It, that feels weak, and it also doesn't scale, right? So it's the same at 13th level as it is going to be at, at 20th level. So, I would maybe say, let, like, have the, have the poison damage be, um, like, half your sneak attack bonus rounded down or something right because that would be whatever at 13th level you are 76 so then uh half rounded down would be 3d6 poison damage but then it starts to scale right because then it, at uh 15th level it's going to go to 46 poison damage on a failed save right doesn't that feel a little bit a little bit more correct to you i don't know it feels more correct to me i feel like that would that would be more interesting it's also like yeah i mean they're gonna succeed on their saving throw eventually you know they just are 
Like, maybe it's not for three turns, but um, are you happy about your 13th level class feature being, like, deal deal uh, seven poison damage three times per combat? Deal 21 extra damage per combat? I just, I'm feeling like, no, because, you know, you, can't, you want to be an assassin. Like, you want to be dealing damage. Like, let's deal some damage. I guess you've got all these other great features and stuff like that, and then, you know, the base class is much better now, so, okay, but. Death Strike. When you hit with your sneak attack on the first round of combat, the target must succeed on a constitution save. God, the rogues really do not want high constitution enemies. These guys are really trying not to have high constitution enemies, because they're, they're, uh, they're knockout, they're blind, they're poison, all this stuff is constitution based. Yeah, they really don't. They are looking for the most fragile guy in the group, and they are they are going to take him out. Target must see on constitution saving throw, uh, or the tax damage is doubled against the target. That's very very good. And obviously at seventeenth level, I I think by this point we're talking about nine or ten d six. So. Doubling that is enormous, and you are doing so much damage, and it's crazy. Um, yeah, love that. And, but it's only in your um, on the first round of combat, which is also you know that's the assassinate, right? Like that's what you that's what you expect. Swashbuckler panache has been redesigned to apply its effects through cutting. Ooh. I like that they they're really letting this redesign filter through to the other classes. It's, it's very cool. Dashing Strike replaces Elegant Maneuver. Gives you an additional Cunning Strike option. Master Duelist has been redesigned to allow you to make an additional attack, provided you meet the requirements. Okay. Um, I just, well, not just, uh, several months ago did my, my pirate build, and I used the Swashbuckler and Panache. Okay. You've practiced new ways to use your sneak attack. The following options are now available your cunning strike options. Goad. Well, we know what this is from Battlemaster. Wisdom saving throw, or they can't attack targets other than you. Good tank feature. Ah, 3d6. Creature of your choice within 30 feet of you must use wisdom saving throw or have the charmed condition. Ah, oh, that's so cool. You're charming people with how, how elegantly you're, you're attacking. That's fun. I like that. Dashing strikes. Um, you get even more. Wow. Okay. All right. This guy is the cutting strike guy. If you practice new ways, use your sneak attack. Parrying stance. Roll a d6 until the start of your next turn. You get a bonus to your AC. You'll have the number rolled. Right? So, so you're foregoing 7 damage and you're gaining, you know, 1 to 5 on your armor class. That's kind of cool, right? I think that's kind of cool. I would do that every time. And I think uh, it's close to this point where you get to add two effects to your sneak attack, right? So if, if you want to continue to goad, and I think goad parrying stance is a great combo. Uh, you forego that, that 3d6 and you're a, a fantastic tank now. That's a great frontline customization. Invigorate. Choose a creature you see within 30 feet of yourself until the end of the creature's turn. Whenever it makes an attack roll, saving throw, roll a d6, add the number of roll to the attack. Wow. That's quite good, isn't it? That's quite good. Uh, it's better than Bless. And it's only costing you 2d6 of your sneak attack damage. God, this this redesign is so good. You guys, the rogue is so good now. I am so... I'm so happy with this. Um, man, that's cool. I haven't seen any videos online talking about the rogue yet. Uh, well, maybe they will by the time this video comes out. But God, that's a, that's a sick redesign. And Master Duelist, immediately after you use your sneak attack, you can get another attack against the same target. Provided you're within five feet. Another target, uh, yeah. So the, the sneak attack, you won't be able to do it again, right? Um, and if you miss that first attack, you're out of luck. Because you didn't, you didn't use your sneak attack. Uh, but yeah, I'll take an extra attack with my, with my Duelist. That's... That's great. No, you're not, you know, you're not using a great axe, so it's not 
substantial, but um, yeah. Thief. Uh, Thief updates. Fast hands use, use an option action. Yep, everyone was so mad about that. Um, magic action to activate a magic item. Sure. Second story work. Move along ceilings. Aren't we stretching the the disbelief a little bit there? Supreme Sneak has a new functionality. You can sacrifice a sneak attack die or remain hidden while you attack. Now, why doesn't that say cunning action? Come on now. Come on now. These reflexes have been restored to really okay. Fast hands. Second story work. Okay. Supreme sneak. Here it is. Yeah, following cunning strike option. Yeah, so that's, that's it is that. Stealth attack. If you have one if you have the hide action. If you have the hide action's invisible condition, this attack doesn't end that condition on you. I like that a lot. You guys, I like that a lot. God, this is such a good class now. Um Yeah. So the, and the question though is, then what are you using your bonus action for, right? And the and the the instinctive thing is like, oh, I have fast hands now. I can make a sleight of hand check or a, use an object check. And it's like, in combat, are you? Maybe. I I think this kind of assumes you've got a magic item you're using as a bonus action. Um, but but being able to to not have to pay that bonus action tax to stay hidden. That's cool. That's cool. Use magic device. Uh, yes. So this is the thing. You Up to four magic items. Uh, ooh, you have a chance of not expending charges. Is that new? I feel like that's new. Uh, and you can use any spell scroll. Ooh. But they, they do not have the use any magic item regardless of prerequisite. Right? I'm not wrong. Yeah, so they can use spell scrolls. I'm going to have to cut this now. I'm almost done with the whole video. This guy. Alright. Um, yeah, so they, they don't have... They have not... Uh, they do not overcome the prerequisites for all this stuff. Uh, but they can use spell scrolls. Thief's reflexes. Uh, laying the ambushes. You can take two turns... During the first round of any combat? Yes. I, I remember this was an ability they always had, but still. Uh, combined with everything else, it's so cool. Um, second initiative, that initiative, minus 10. Okay. Alright. I love that. You guys. Um, I'm in love with the new rogue. I love it so much. This is exactly, like, like precisely what I wanted. For, for you know, kind of for all marshals, right? But, like, the rogue needed it, right, real bad. And it, it got it in spades. And it's such a fun way of using these subclasses, giving you new cunning action things that it's just so good. It's so good, you guys. This is amazing. Wizards of the Coast, uh, everything bad I've ever said about you um, was true. But it's not true in this case because you did a great job with the rogue.